something that you have built through them, Lord God. And Lord, we pray that you will... Hello, Hallam and C for Turning Point. It's so great to be with you today. And it's an exciting time because see, we've just finished our last term and we're heading into a new term with a new theme. Our theme is pursuing God. And what a great thing we're gonna be doing as we learn to pursue God, we're actually gonna find out how good our God really is. He's always got a great plan for us, a great purpose for us. And so as we listen to the service today, as we take part of it, we enjoy the worship that I believe today you will encounter an incredible touch of the Holy Spirit. So the Bible says if we'll draw near to him, he will draw near to us. My encouragement today, draw near to God, experience the presence of God, and today this could be a change for the good. Bless you as you enjoy the service. It's been so good that you've been able to join with us this morning and I hope that you've been able to enjoy the worship together. Well, in a few moments, Sandra Tennyson's going to be just bringing us around the Word of God. And my encouragement is, get out a Bible, follow through. Because see, if we pursue God, 
he will be found. He'll come. So let's listen as Sandra brings us into the word today. Good morning. It's time for an encounter with God. I'm going to quote a famous theologian by the name of John Wesley when he said, when you set yourself on fire, people love to come and see you burn. Let's look at what that means. If I was to go around this room and ask you, even you online viewers, whether you've had an encounter with God and maybe you have had several, I'm sure some of you would put up your hands and say, yes, I have had. And I'm sure when you've had that encounter with God, your life changed for the better. The word encounter in the Hebrew dictionary says, it's like an impact, a collision, a connection, and in a negative sense, a confrontation, like you would confront the enemy. So an encounter with God would be when you become aware of his manifest presence, his glory, his holiness, his majesty, his loveliness, his greatness, his passion for you, his love and his kindness. Having an encounter with God is not just your five minute devotion to God and you're saying, okay, God, bye bye. I've had my time alone with you and that's it. Having an encounter with God, a true encounter means it it's an excitement. You become excited and something change changes inside of you. In the Old Testament, Isaiah the prophet, his encounter with God was in the form of a vision. It was, a it was during a time when Israel was in moral decline. With pagan worship, the wealth were oppressing the poor, the women neglecting their families for carnal pleasures, and the priests and prophets became drunken men. So in Isaiah chapter 6, it says, In the year that King Uzziah died, I saw in a vision the Lord sitting on a throne, high and exalted with the train of his robe, filling the most part of the temple. He sees the vision of seraphims, and, he, and they cry out, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty. The whole earth is filled with his glory. And it says the foundations of the thresholds uh, trembled at his voice. And then there was something that he had to do. He says, woe is me, for I am a man of unclean lips. So there was a change. There was something that happened that he needed to change. In the New Testament, we're going to look at Stephen in Acts chapter 5, verses 8 to 11. It says, now Stephen, he was one of the first martyrs, a man full of God's grace and power performed great wonders and signs among the people. But there was opposition that arose from members of the synagogue. And they accused Stephen and they began to argue with him. They brought false allegations against him. But, this, but the word of God says they could not withstand the wisdom in which Stephen spoke. So they began in Acts chapter 7 to stone Stephen. But Stephen, full of the Holy Spirit, that's Acts chapter 7, verses 54 to 60. But Stephen, full of the Holy Spirit, looked up to heaven and saw the glory of God and Jesus standing at the right hand of God. Look, he said, I see heaven open and the Son of Man standing at the right hand of God. But they could not hear what he was saying. The people could not hear. They were uh, very angry with him and they stoned him to death. And they say, the witnesses laid his garments at the feet of a young man named Saul. And Saul, who became Paul on the way to Damascus, he was, he was struck by a light and he encountered Jesus in a miraculous way. 
So that's in 1 Corinthians chapter 9, verses 1 to 6. So it's time for an encounter with God. The main purpose for our lives on this earth is to fulfill God's plans. And God's plan and purpose for our lives is, is so that we can fulfill all that he has said about us. And God's purpose is to help us to fulfill the plans he has for our lives. For us to be able to do that, we need to have regular encounters with God. Another word for an encounter is pursuing God's presence, pursuing, hungering, hungering for God. It's true that when we pray and we read the word, we connect with God. That's great. But for us to burn with the passion and to have the desires that God's put on our hearts to come to pass, we need a few God collisions in our lives. Throughout the Bible, in the Old and the New Testaments, we read about many when men and women, some known, some familiar names, some not so known, who encountered God and they were challenged to change something. I hope that as we hear what the Lord is saying to us through his word, we will start hungering and thirsting for God. And we can say, there's nothing else that will do. I just want you, Lord. Nothing else will do. Absolutely nothing else will do. I just want you and let the passion of God burn in our hearts for him. In the Old Testament, Samuel was a very young boy. And he was brought into the temple when he was quite young by his mother and father. And it says in 1 Samuel chapter 3, verses 10 to 11, The Lord said to Samuel, Behold, I am about to do a thing in Israel at which both ears of everyone who hears it will tingle. Samuel was a very young boy and he encountered God. And great things were done through him. We look at even Solomon in 1 Kings chapter 3. It says, At Gibeon the Lord appeared to Solomon. And Solomon says, Lord, give me a discerning heart so that I can govern your people and distinguish between right and wrong. We're looking at Judges chapter 6. The man Gideon, an angel of the Lord appeared to him and said, The Lord is with you, O valiant warrior. I can tell you, Gideon was not feeling like a valiant warrior. Because he was in the midst of the Midianites who were oppressing them. And he, they were making shelters, the, the Israelites were making shelters in mountain clefts in caves and in strongholds because the Midianites camped on the land to ruin the crops. So the, the Israelites were trying to protect their crops and they were afraid of the Midianites. And God appeared to him and he encountered God and God said, mighty, valiant warrior. When we look at Abraham and Sarah, Abraham had many encounters with God. And it says, all the nations of the earth was going to be blessed through Abraham. And we are blessed as a result of that. We're going to look at Joshua when he had just taken over Moses and Moses had passed on. And Joshua is now by the side of Jericho. 
He looked up and behold, he saw a man standing opposite him with his sword drawn in his hand. And Joshua went to him and said to him, Are you for us or for our adversaries? He said, No, rather I have come now as captain of the army of the Lord. I like this every time the angel of God appeared or every time there's an encounter. We have a response. And Joshua fell with his face toward the earth and bowed down and said to him, What does my Lord have to say to his servant? When we look at those encounters by the many people that I just talked about, we cannot have an encounter with God and do nothing about it. Something changes in our lives. There's something that happens. It's not for us. It's so that we can fulfill the purposes and the plans that God has for us. And I have to tell you, it becomes easier and easier to do what God has called us to do. I'm not speaking today as someone who is not pursuing to have encounters with God. I'm not there yet. I've had a couple and it's been amazing. It's because I want to have the answer and be the answer to the people that are looking for an answer in this world today. I want us as a church to be the answer, not direct them elsewhere, but say, come on, I have the answer because I have had encounters with God and God has shown me he has changed me and he has given me insight. And when his presence is there, things begin to happen. And it happens easily because we have given God the time to encounter us. We're going to continue to look at the book of Judges, but we're going to skim through some of those chapters we will not be able to read chapters 13 to 16 we'll be here a long time but that's talking about samson's life and samson truly reminds me of me and just of human beings we do love god we have we know he has a purpose and a plan but from time to time we do things that are not pleasing in his sight. But because of many encounters with God, he was able to accomplish what God had purposed for his life. But I want to look at the scripture, at his birth, at his marriages, and then at his death. So we're looking at one Judges chapter 13, it says, A certain man named Zorah, named Manoah, from the clan of the Danites, had a wife who was childless, unable to give birth. I just want to remember the wife had no name, didn't record a name. But guess what happened? The angel of the Lord appeared to her and said to her, You are barren and childless, but you are going to become pregnant and give birth to a son. Now say to it that you do not drink wine or any fermented drink and that you do not eat anything unclean. You will become pregnant and have a son whose head is never to be touched by a razor because the boy is dedicated to the Lord and he is a Nazarite, which means his hair would never be cut. The reason for Samson's birth says he will take the lead in delivering Israel from the hands of the Philistines. 
So every time we encounter God, or all of these people that we read encountered God, there was a purpose. And the purpose is to deliver people from their bondages. And it hasn't changed. It's the same. God's given us a mandate to deliver the people who are in bondage. Well, um, this lady who had no name goes and tells her husband, Manoah. And Manoah is a bit concerned, I think, because he didn't hear from the angel of God himself. So he says to God, God, can you come and tell me again? And of course, God comes and he comes back to the wife. And so the wife runs and gets the husband and says, come on, the angel of God is here. So Manoah asks the same question. So how are we to bring up this child? Well, he didn't hear what the wife had already told him. So the angel of God tells him again. So we see Samson is born. He's being blessed by God. And the word of God says, God's spirit begins to stir Samson. Samson had an up, up and down, up and down life, like many of us do. But it was God stirring and the encounters that he had that kept him to do what God had called him to do. And he did remarkable things for God. And he was a memorable deliverer of Israel. We see Samson going the wrong way in, uh, in, uh, in Judges chapter 14. Samson goes to the Philistines and he sees a beautiful woman and he tells his parents, well, you've got to get that woman for me. And his father and mother says, isn't there anyone else amongst your relatives? Must you go to those uncircumcised Philistines? No, Philistines to get a wife. But Samson said to his father, get her for me. She's the right one for me. But the Bible says his parents did not know that this was from the Lord who was seeking an occasion to confront the Philistines for at that time they were ruling over Israel. So Samson was born to be the leader in delivering Israel from the hands of the Philistines. So this was an occasion for that to happen. So Samson gets married, but doesn't consummate the marriage. He gets, he's a hothead, he goes back to his parents, and then suddenly after a while he realizes, oh, I'm married, so he kind of comes back to consummate the marriage. And his wife's father says, well, you were not around, so I gave her in marriage to your best man. And he, Samson gets really, really mad and he does some funny things, but he was really mad and he is not a happy man. And he's been wanting to take vengeance on the Philistines. So then we look at Samson falling in love with another woman called Delilah. And Samson, being in this relationship with her, continued to um, be something that really aggravated the Philistines. Because he did great exploits, the, the Philistines began to uh, ask Delilah to Find out from Samson where his strength was. And Samson began to play and toy with uh, Delilah's nagging. But on one occasion, I think he must have been so worn out, he was lying down on Delilah's lap. And when she asked the question again, he said, Well, my hair has never been cut. So um, that's where my strength lies. And while she was stroking his hair and Samson falling asleep and really enjoying his time, 
on her lap. She took the scissors and cut off his locks and she called out, Samson, the Philistines are upon you. Samson didn't realize that the Spirit of God had left him, the power had left him. So he got up, but there was no strength left. So the Philistines took him captive, gouged his eyes out and put him in prison. And he began to work in prison. But Samson's hair, it says, begins to grow again. It seems like the Philistines were not very pleased with Samson. They always had wanted an occasion to ridicule him. So one day they're having a great big party and so they ask for Samson to come. So two men bring Samson with his hands uh, tied to, uh, to the two of them with fetters and they wanted Samson to, to perform for them. There were so many people that were in this temple. They were drunk. There were women and they were, they were having a party and they were expecting Samson to perform. Samson um, at that time prays to God and he says, Lord, remember me. And, the, and God remembered him. His hair began to grow. That was just an outward expression of what God was going to do in his life. So with that strength, he gained that strength. He got a hold of the two pillars and he pushed it with all his might. It says in the word that in his death, so the pillar fell down and it killed all the Philistines that were in the temple along with Samson. And it says in Samson's death, he killed more Philistines than when he was alive. I take um, great courage at that because even though Samson went his different ways and was not um, and was not really seemed that he was not following the path that God had for him, but there was something that was in him because of the many encounters he had with God. And he remembered God in the prison, when he was in prison, when he was working and laboring. He remembered God. I'm sure he repented before God. He prayed to God. And we find that when he prayed this ultimate heart cry, the prayer to God, God heard him and in his death, more people were killed than when he was alive. So he did fulfill God's plan for his life. In closing, God wants to encounter us regularly. He wants to show himself strong and mighty on our behalf. He wants to engage with us. He wants to become more and more a part of our lives. He wants us to be more and more aware of his presence, his holiness, so that we can easily fulfill his plans and purposes for our lives. Because when we burn with passion for him, Everything that comes out from us 
will be what God calling us to do. In, my, in the recent past, in my devotion times, I have been asking God to give me a heart to hunger and thirst for him. I know that even though it is great for me as a person, I know that there's a greater purpose for my hunger. I'm beginning to see how wonderful and how good God is, not only to me, but he wants to be good. And he wants people to know of his goodness. And so we are the links to that. God meets us on a daily basis when we pray and study the word. And that's amazing. But how about we ask God to create a hunger and a thirst for his manifest presence so that just like those that we have heard today, we too should be able to confidently, without any hesitation, show people around us the answer or be the answer to their needs. Let us desire like the psalm said, like a deer panting for the water brooks. Because in our desire to encounter God, we will reflect his majesty and glory and his presence and his power will be so shown everywhere we go. Can I please encourage you to hunger and thirst after him. First of all, we ask and we receive. We knock and the door will be open to us. We need to seek him with all our hearts and we will find him. Let us, when we pray and have a time of devotion, not just do it because we have to do it, but because we want to encounter his very presence. And say, Lord, I am not leaving here until I encounter you. Just as Moses also prayed when he had to lead the children of Israel, he said, God, if your presence doesn't go before me, I am not leaving. There's another quote I heard, the richest place on earth is not China, Singapore or Africa, but the cemetery. We don't want to take all our goodies, our gifts down to the burial. Let's do what God's asked us to do with the passion, with the purpose, with his presence so that we will fulfill all that he has purpose for our lives and for those that God will bring into our path. Let's pray, please. Heavenly Father, thank you for your word. You continue to amaze us, Lord, with who you are. I am so grateful to you that you chose, Lord, to come and live with us, Lord. Help us, Lord, to hunger and thirst for you on a daily basis so that we will encounter you, Lord, on a daily basis. That our prayer life, our devotions, Lord, to you will not just be out of a ritual or just because I have to do it, but with a purpose so that we will, Lord, encounter you. Father, thank you. You said, Lord, when we ask, we will receive. And when we seek, we will find. And when we knock, the door will be open for us. And your word also says, taste and see that the Lord is good. Amen. God bless you guys.
the goodness of God. In all my life, you have been faithful. In all my life, you have been so, so good. With every breath that I am able, oh, I will sing of the goodness. Just want to thank you so much for being with us today today i pray that god has come and touched you truly as we re reach out to god he reaches out to us if we pursue god let me tell you this he will be found today if you're not quite sure what that means i want to encourage you to stop and simply ask yourself this question do you have the reality of god living in your life do you know Jesus as your own personal saviour? If you're not quite sure what all that means, then my encouragement is to get on to the Turning Point Hallam website. And there's a section in there that says, I want to know more about Jesus or pray for me. Either one of those sections. Send us a quick message and we'd love to follow you up. We'd love to share some more things with you. Because the truth is, God wants to be part of your life. But what he's looking for is us to respond to him. So my encouragement, pursue the Lord. Thank you for being with us today. And we look forward to seeing you again next week as we continue to pursue God and find what his purposes are for our life. Bless you all.